Ray, I'm starving. We haven't eaten in the last five minutes. You make a very compelling point. Do you want to order some food? Sure. How about sushi? Oh, heck yeah. Oh my god, look at this whale shark. This reminds me of the time I got thrown off a boat into the sea full of these bad boys. Did you know that they're filter feeders? They don't chew their food either. They have sensory cells in their nasal grooves to detect food in the water. And they'll close their mouths if something big is in front of them, like human. <laughs> You're so silly. Why are you laughing at me? No, no, I'm not laughing at you. It's just, you've told me this several times already. I... I have? I'm pretty sure this was the first time. Oh yeah, do you want to order some food? <sighs> That's the second time you've asked, but of course! Hey Peach Pals, name's Hyria, and a few months ago I was diagnosed with ASD or Autism Spectrum Disorder at the ripe old age of, what you suckers think I was going to give you my age? I lived my whole life until this point wondering why I seemed to interact with the world differently compared to everyone else. And this whole time it had been ruled out as just being shy or socially anxious. Did you know that almost 80% of girls are either misdiagnosed or not diagnosed correctly with autism at 18? The statistics are mental! So it's no wonder that I fought for my life in school and then applying to university and then getting into medical school without knowing I had a disability. <laughs> Today I wanted to cover my own autistic behaviours and my autism story to raise awareness and tackle stereotypes of this disorder and to connect to other autistic people. Some of these traits you may not have known are signs of autism too. It's important to remember that every autistic person experiences things differently and we all fall on different parts of the spectrum, which isn't linear, it's more like a pie chart. It's a neurological developmental disorder characterized by social challenges, difficulties with communication, and repetitive behaviors. Before we begin, please don't use this video or my symptoms to self-diagnose. Speak to your family doctor or qualified therapist to get a medical opinion and a proper diagnosis to receive the help you need. If you think you're autistic but can't access healthcare, talk to your autistic or neurodivergent friends for advice on how they cope and make adjustments to help themselves on a day-to-day. -day. So, let's go! 1. As a child, I had a complete disinterest in other people. I preferred to play on my own rather than engage with other children. I didn't like social games or playing pretend, so I never really made any friends. I almost never talked in school to the point people thought I was mute. And growing up, I was never able to talk to anyone outside my family. If I needed to ask for help or order food at a cafe, for example, I'd get my sister or parents to do it for me, even as an adult. Autism gang, rise up! What? Where did you come from? The walls. Anyway, as the poster child for autism, it's kind of my duty to be here. <clears throat> So, my pookie wookie sibling dearest would only hang out with me and talk to me at school because we'd be on that trism wavelength. She's right though, the only person I would play with was my younger sister because we had shared special interests. Aw man. 2. I have difficulty interpreting body language, tone and facial expressions. For example, if someone is showing signs of impatience, irritation or boredom, or if someone seems really down compared to normal, I usually can't pick up on it. I also can't pick up on tone, so unless someone uses a lot of exclamation points or emojis in messages, I always think they're annoyed or angry at me, and I get really distressed and upset. 3. Eye contact is really unnatural for me, and I can't maintain it when someone's looking at or talking to me. I'll usually be looking up, down, or off to the side which can make it seem like I'm not listening when I am, and I feel really guilty about it. 4. I never knew how to fit in with others. It was like everyone got a guidebook on how to interact with each other, and I was left out. Instead, I observed how others acted and copied them to seem normal. This is called masking and is used to suppress or hide autistic behaviours. It's one of the many reasons autism can fly under the radar for many people. 5. I feel out of place in every conversation, which makes socialising really stressful. I don't know when I should speak and when I should be quiet, so I almost always cut people off when they're talking by accident. 
And when I'm excited, I blurt out my thoughts and interrupt others. Or I miss all the gaps in a conversation, so I end up staying completely silent. For this reason, I resent phone calls with every ounce of my being. I'm always so clumsy when talking to someone I can't physically see. To be fair, I'm like that all the time though. I prefer texting to actually talking to someone because I can take my time perfecting what I want to say to avoid miscommunicating my thoughts. 6. Jokes, sarcasm, dry humour, I'm always the last person to get them. I tend to take them literally and then get upset, or ask for it to be explained which takes the fun out of it for others. Which bear is the most condescending? I don't know. A panda. What? <laughs> Baby, a panda. A panda. What? <laughs> <laughs> 7. I'm always told I talk too loudly and have no volume control, even though I think I'm talking at a normal volume. I used to get told off for it a lot, especially in places when you're supposed to be quiet, like in a silent classroom or a library. 8. Autism affects my memory. I have perfect memory for my special interests and things I like, and a super poor memory for everything else. I generally forget experiences I've had with people, and I can't remember things they've said. It always makes me feel like a bad friend when others remember the small things I've said, but I can never recall anything they've said. I also forget names, faces, and birthdays super easily. I could have talked to someone several times, and then after a few weeks, I've totally forgotten them. 9. I script conversations in my head ahead of time, and I'll spend hours thinking about everything I could have said in a situation or conversation when it's over. 10. I almost never hear this one talked about, and it sounds really bad, but hear me out. I lack empathy to an extent. I usually never relate to how others are feeling or struggle to understand why they feel the way they do. It can make me seem emotionally detached from everyone, but I can't change that. 11. When people look at me, they think, how can someone be so smart yet so stupid? And to that I say, I don't know, bro. Yes, I got into medical school, but I'm also probably one of the stupidest people you've ever met. Hey, Ray, what time is it? Monday. Pardon? Say, what do you think of... Hello? You didn't finish your sentence. Huh? Please tell me others can relate. <laughs> 12. I'm super sensitive to food textures. There's so many things I can't eat purely because of the texture, even if it smells delicious. And when I say I can't, I physically can't. If a certain texture that sets me off, I gag and my throat closes up, so I can't swallow. For example, I can only eat chicken breasts and no other part, I hate a lot of cooked vegetables, I can't eat certain fruit unless they're very crunchy, and I hate steak. 13. Doing the dishes is sensory overload. The smell, sound, and slimy texture makes me flinch, shiver, and shake, and has made me cry several times. Now I do the dishes with gloves and noise-canceling headphones. Unfortunately, I also have OCD and have a fear of contamination, so my loving boyfriend helps me out a lot. 14. Sounds. Toilet flushing, household appliances, vehicles with loud engines, loud music and voices, crowds, you get the idea. These all cause me to shut down and go non-verbal. We had a halfway graduation ball at medical school, and Ko was my handsome date. And while my friends were all dancing and having fun, I was hiding in my boyfriend's blazer trying to shut out the noise. It was so frustrating because I wanted to enjoy the evening and have a magical time with my friends and the person I love most, but instead I was fighting for my life not to have a mental breakdown. 15. Bright and neon lights are a big no-no. I keep my room dark all day and use a soft light lamp at night. I avoid any place that has flashy lights. 16. I have strong colour preferences. I can only tolerate dull or pastel colours. I hate neons and super bright colours, and in a lot of my old art, you can see the mute colour patterns. 17. Clothes. 
I hate seams, I can't tolerate labels, jeans are too constricting and itchy, and I can only handle very few fabric textures on my skin. If I go out accidentally wearing one of these, I can't focus on what I'm doing or have a good time because I'm so desperate to rip it off in place of something soft. 18. I have an incredibly high pain tolerance. Pretty self-explanatory. 19. I follow the same rigid routine every day. Looky here. I have to overplan everything and make sure I know what I'm doing at every minute of the day. If my friends want to hang out, I need to know days in advance so I can schedule that time in. I never do anything spontaneously. The idea really freaks me out. 20. I can't cope with change and avoid trying anything new. I'll eat the exact same meal for breakfast and lunch every day for years and don't like going to places I've never been to before. 21. I stim a lot. <laughs> Stimming refers to repetitive body movements or noises. Anyone can stim, but autistic people like me, we don't have control over them and have much awareness that we're doing it. And it can become pretty disruptive to others. Stims are a way of autistic people managing their emotions or provide a way to block out overstimulation. Some examples of my stims are flapping my arms or hands about, flicking my fingers, opening and closing drawers or doors, spinning objects around, repeating phrases or words people say, reorganizing my desk and bedside table in size and color order, phrase of the day repeating in my head, fidgeting with my keychains, earrings or accessories and objects to feel the texture, twirling my hair, ripping up erasers and tissue paper, and humming. 22. Jumping back to my point about memory, I never remember telling people things, which can lead me to repeat the same story or facts over and over. In my head, I'm telling it for the first time. I'll also repeat a question or comment over and over in a conversation too, and it feels like I haven't said it before. 23. Now onto the one you've all been waiting for, special interests. These are very specific and strong interests that help manage stress and anxiety experienced in autism. And I can hear you in the back saying, well Ray, isn't that just a hobby? Everyone has those. Wrong! Special interests are so much more intense than just a hobby. Sometimes we can break down and get extremely upset if we can't engage with our special interests. They are also so all-consuming to the point you forget to do other responsibilities or take care of normal human needs like using the bathroom or eating. And when I talk about them, I completely dominate a conversation and don't give anyone a chance to speak. Picture it like this, neurotypical people have two functioning legs, while autistic people have a broken one. It causes a lot of pain and distress, and our special interest is the crutch we support ourselves with to make the bad feelings go away. Some of my special interests in childhood were marine biology, specifically dolphins, drawing, collecting stickers and buttons, the medical properties of plants, the biology of dinosaurs, and Pokemon. Now ain't that an eclectic mix. Now I collect an obscene amount of rocks and minerals I find, draw rather than talk to people, repeatedly watch the same true crime series, study medication, and still Pokemon. Always Pokemon. 24. I watch the same movies, series, and videos over and over again and refuse to watch anything new. Every time I watch it again, it's like I'm experiencing it for the first time all over again. And I know a lot of my neurotypical friends don't feel the same. So that was the whirlwind crash course of my experience with autism. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's any neurodivergent people watching, let me know if you relate to anything in this video and mention your own personal experiences down below if you feel comfortable. A big thank you to my friend Yoontoons for voicing some lines for me. Please check her content out below 
And shout out to my awesome sister and boyfriend for voicing some scenarios for me. You guys are the best and I love you lots. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I love you guys and until next time, stay peachy. Oh, hi, you konnichi. What up this shoe? I'm Haria. Welcome to the end of my video. Girl, stop. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like to see more of my spicy kawaii desu content, please hit that Discord, the link in my bio. And you and all of my other nya nya desus can see more of me. Ah! I turned into <laughs> What? <laughs> Is that how you see me? Yes. <laughs> Girl. You'd be up in my ear like, ah! <laughs> Stop! Okay. How did you feel to start in whatever this was? <laughs> <laughs> Can I swear? Yeah. Oh, well. I feel like I'm in my head teacher's lounge, like recording something to like promote the school. I'm like, yeah, yeah. hi. It's, um, it's here. Yeah, I've got your gunpoint. I'm like, <laughs> she feeds me sometimes. <laughs> Pocky. Pocky mm. ASMR. Wait, wait, wait. Are you guys? turning into an ASMR yes, channel now? Hi, guys. Welcome to uh, Pocky ASMR. Oh, wow. It broke shit out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing the bomb. Anna, you're <laughs> getting it on the mic! <laughs> um. All right, we have, a, we have a Discord server. Yay, Discord. Join. Bye. Yay. I have a Discord server now. Please join it. We hang out. Stop! <laughs> okay, bye! <laughs>